Well, I was born in Boston, but we didn't stay there. My father worked for the airlines, and we moved almost every year, most of my growing up. My mother was artistic. We had an artistic upbringing. I feel like an East Coast girl. I can't imagine living very far from the water. Completely by accident, and I ended up in Rhode Island. I applied to RISD, and I got a Master's of Art in Teaching. I know a lot of artists ended up in Rhode Island because they went to RISD. I guess I'm going to have to start calling it home. I've been here 20 years now. I did a lot of art in school, but I was doing a lot of needlework and things at home. And textiles was my first love, so I went to regular college first because I wasn't sure that I wanted to go to art school. And I realized that I was staying up all night to finish my art projects, but not to finish my papers. So I transferred to art school. In the meantime, I fell in love and moved to England and I finished my degree and got a job teaching. And someone said to me, there's another weaver that lives here that's from America. And we lived in a really small town in Cornwall. And I was like, really? She was a tapestry weaver. And um, she went to France and discovered the hand tufting process. The process is much more like painting. You think, I'll think I'll make a rug. You underdraw the rug on the canvas and you start tufting. You don't start at one end and go to the other end. And if you don't like it, you can rip it up. And I thought, wow, this is like painting, only I get to use the material that I love the best. I, you know, I'm a textiles person. The paint was okay, but actually the paint process, I tended to be more timid than I would be with, with the fiber. I do a scale drawing in pencil, just a number two. So I take the scale drawing, scale it up, draw it in charcoal on the back of a piece of cloth, and gather the yarns, and that's when I decide what my palette's going to be. And it could be that I've seen a painting that had a certain palette in it that I admired. It could be something from a landscape that I've seen. It could be from my morning walk. You know, the color of the bulrushes against the stone wall. That color combination is precise, but also starts as a, as a sort of emotional response to something. The thing that's different from painting to the tufting is that you start with the details and work to the background. So if it's sort of like coloring with crayons, not like painting. So if you wanted to have a purple spotted cow, you'd put the purple spots on first and then color around them. So that's the way that my work goes. Details first. Everyone's always surprised that, that I do all this. It's just, it's very, very, very easy to do, but because the, the cloth is pliable, you just use your, uh, just lean into it, and the nails help. Hand tufted rugs are the industrial strength version of a hooked rug. What my tufter does, it's electric, and it will drive the yarn from the back to the front, punching it in a continuous loop anywhere I want it to go. It's much faster, and it also has a bigger diameter needle, so it punches a really hefty bunch of threads through the back of the cloth. And what happens is, you, when you punch, you've spread the web of the cloth you're punching into apart and pushed quite a substantial loop through, that's why they call it a tuck, which is spread out, and then the cloth is snapped back together because there's a natural pliancy to the cloth. So in the studio, it goes from sitting on the floor to sitting on this stool, to sitting on a bucket, to sitting on the next stool, to climbing a little ladder, to climbing a big ladder, to climbing the scaffolding to do the top of this frame. It's a very physical job. four or five years ago, I just had this revelation about the way the work looked that, you know, okay, you've got, you've got a polka dot on a background, 
why isn't the background doing something? You know, it's still, you're just decorating here. You know, plopping something on something else. And I thought, wow, I could make the background do something. And that's where I am now, is I've taken all of that visual lingo, all of those simple shapes, and started recombining them. I really like that, that my work is part of the decorative tradition. You know, there are certain, certain things that repeat over and over, besides the floral, figurative stuff, you know? It's those polka dots, those stripes, those squares. And I, I want to play with that. It gets to be like, it's like the notes on, in music, right? You just combine the same notes over and over in different, different patterns, different. I do have a sort of a jazz feeling about it. I do. It's a riff, you know, you get your riff and you, you repeat it, you syncopate it. It's been extraordinary. The rugs are still meant to be walked on. People do hang them, and that's fine with me now. I have that feeling about some of them too. But I sort of feel like it's the ultimate luxury that everything in your house is art. You know, I, I eat off of handmade dishes. I drink out of handmade glasses. Why shouldn't you have art on your floor too? It's an incredible luxury. And they get nicer looking as they get old. I like the fact that I've come full circle back, you know, even though my teacher probably would be very unhappy that people were walking on my work. I'm not. But, you know, hang it, don't hang it. It's still art to me. And it, I think it's art to a lot of people.